All right, good morning and hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Kara Wonk and I'm a design consultant here at Foster's Remodeling. Um, thank you again for being, a, being with us this morning. I'm live from our showroom in Lorton, Virginia. I am joined by Chris Arnold, our Vice President of Business Development. So he'll be helping me, helping me field your questions today. So we'll be pausing several times um, throughout today's seminar to answer any questions. Um, please feel free to post them in the chat at any time and we'll be breaking um, frequently to review those. Okay, so today's seminar is called Creating a Space that Fits Your Lifestyle. So <clears throat> we'll be focusing on how to begin the remodeling process and how our process here at Foster works. Um, and then we'll discuss different ways we, um, that we can add additional space to your home and really what we need to consider beforehand. All right, so let's get started. So again, I am Kara Wonk. I'm a design consultant here at Foster Remodeling Solutions. Um, just to give you a little bit of background on myself, I graduated from West Virginia University with a Bachelor of Science degree in interior design. Um, I also spent time during school studying design in Florence, Italy. Um, and then since graduating, I've been working on various aspects of um, residential design. So at Foster's, we like to say, you know, our process makes it perfect. So just as the supporting structure of your home keeps it from collapsing, our process is a structure that keeps your project on time and on budget with clear expectations and in instructions from our team. You know, we've divided our process into eight steps that help you understand the Foster mentality and how we work through the process of perfecting your project starting long before the actual construction begins. So let's start with the first part, um, step. It all starts with your request. So we just need to hear from you, you know, whether it's a phone call, an online request booking, an online scheduled appointment, or an in-person visit to our showroom. We just need to know you need us. So with that, our process begins with the initial contact. So you're gonna either talk to our office manager, Teresa, or one of us. And then during that conversation, we'll really get to know you, your remodeling goals, um, we'll gather information like your address, your contact information. Um, we'll discuss your intended budget for the project, uh, project, as well as some of our starting budget points. Then we'll go ahead and schedule the first initial visit. Um, this can be either in person or um, if you prefer online consultation. Um, and of course, whatever is more convenient for your schedule. And then if we're looking specifically at additions, we will need a copy of your plat. Um, this kind of here shows you an example of that. So with this, we will need to research um, your county, city, and town requirements or restrictions um, prior to our visit. Um, so that way we know um, we can make sure what you're looking to do really falls within the guidelines um, beforehand. Now, when we come to your home, you do want to plan at least two to three hours of time spent discussing um, the project in full, and then we'll go ahead and sketch out and take um, lots of detailed measurements of the interior as well as exterior areas that will be affected, and of course, lots of photos. So however it is that you come to us, whether you call our office or um, schedule an online scheduling or a referral from our former client, we're happy to have you and honor that you've chosen Foster Remodeling Solutions to come to your home. All right, so let's jump into the process. So step one is what we call vision. So really we're kind of see what's your goal for your modeling project? You know, how would you like to expand, reconfigure, or um, use a new or existing space? What are really, really, really your must have items? So ideally, we need to meet in your home, sit down together and talk about your goals. After discussing your goals, we're gonna go ahead and take um, a lot of detailed measurements of your space that we're looking at remodeling. Um, and then of course, we're gonna take a lot of um, photos. And then we'll go ahead and discuss your intended ballpark budget. Um, and just to know here, you know, <clears throat> if you're uncomfortable with us coming out, especially because of COVID, you know, we're more than happy to do a virtual consultation. Um, what we do is ask you to take simple measurements of the spaces that will be affected, um, as well as lots of pictures. And that way we can put an estimate and a design project together for you based off of that. So at the end of our visit, what we'll go ahead and do is now schedule a time to meet back up at our showroom in Lorton. Um, this usually is about three to four weeks, depending on the scope of work we're looking at. Um, but here we're gonna go ahead and review your prelim preliminary design ideas, as well as our preliminary budget to go with that. So here during step two, after we've uh, made our first visit, we'll take all the information gathered from that. 
back to our office and get put together a preliminary concept design. Um, so with this, we'll be using measurements. Um, we'll put together an existing floor plan as shown here. Um, and then we'll also, based on our conversation, put together um, a proposed floor plan shown here. So here with this project, what we had it was a garage, uh, garage conversion. So this client wanted to convert their garage into a master bedroom suite for his wife. Um, his wife is in a wheelchair and does have mobility issues. So with the proposed floor plan, we have a ramp going up to the front porch, the new front porch area. As you walk into the front door, there is a five foot circular radius to make it easy turn around. All the doors and openings will be 36 inches. So we really developed this plan based off a universal design concept. Um, in the bedroom and going into the bathroom there, you can see another five foot radius um, turnaround circle. We have a roll in shower as well. Um, and then we have the vanity you should be able to roll underneath too. So after the floor plan, we also do have renderings kind of showing, um, giving more of a visualized look on what we're kind of thinking for the space. Um, and here is the bedroom as well as the bathroom there. But as you can see, it's pretty realistic, um, so it helps you visualize um, what we're thinking for you. It's also right after this, what we'll go ahead and do um, is give you a detailed preliminary budget. So during um, you know, our initial um, conversation, we established what we're looking for. So here again, we were talking about the garage um, conversion. So with this, we're going to break the estimate down to different phases. So with the garage conversion, what we did is included the bedroom, the walk-in closet, and then we separate out the bathroom. So as you, um, with our estimate, we like to consider, um, <clears throat> take consideration what you currently have for your finishes throughout your home to ensure that the new addition will blend with the existing structure. If you're looking to add a bathroom or a kitchen to the new space and specialized plumbing items or very customized tile or cabinetry are on your wish list, we want to make sure we include those in your estimate. So <clears throat> as you can see here, um, as we zoom in a little bit, it's a very detailed estimate for you. We put a tremendous amount of work um, into this to ensure that we have included all necessary requirements for your remodel. You know, we want to be as transparent and upfront as possible with the budget that's really required to complete your project. So finally, after we've gone through the budget, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and give you our uh, partner plan or what we call a design agreement. So here's an example of the design agreement looking at specifically the project we just discussed. So the design agreement outlines both the design process and the scope of work that will be included in the budget pricing. So for the design agreement, we take a total of um, from the preliminary budget and we apply a range to that. So usually what we'll do is do 5% below and then 5% above, which gives you your really your working budget range. So for this project, as you can see, the budget range on here was 200,000 to about 220,000. So <clears throat> as long as you kind of reasonably stick to the scope of the work and the finishes as detailed, um, you should be staying within this budget range. When we look at the design retainer for the project, the high end of the budget range was roughly 220,000. So to move forward um, and sign the design agreement, we do require 5% down to move forward into design together. So the retainer of that would be on the high end of the budget, which would be the 11,000. Now, if you go through design and we move forward into construction together, the design retainer then is applied to the total cost of your project. So really you want to think of this um, design retainer as a sign of intent to move forward with Foster. Alright, so we're going to take a pause um, a moment just at, um, to answer a few questions. So as of right now, we don't have any questions. Feel free to use the chat feature to send in questions and we'll be taking uh, several other breaks throughout the seminar. All right, perfect. So we'll continue on to step three, the scope. OK, so we've gone through and we signed the design agreement and the 5% retainer. So now with that, we're going to work together to refine your design until you're completely satisfied um, with the end result. So during this process, if you make any changes that potentially push you beyond the high end of your budget range, we'll also uh, let you know. Um, you're always welcome to expand your scope of work or upgrade your finishes. We just want to make sure that you're aware of those impact is, um, of the impact those changes have on your budget, of course, your timeline. So with this step, what we'll do next is schedule a visit with our architect draftsman, Joshua. 
um, and then as well as our estimator, Paul. So Joshua and Paul um, will <clears throat> complete a more comprehensive survey of your home, which includes a lot of detailed measurements. Um, we'll also do a more in-depth examination of your structural components, um, electrical and plumbing. Um, we'll poke and pride and kind of really see what's going on um, underneath behind the wall. So, and then if, of course, if your home is older than 1978, we'll also perform a lead test. So really at this point in the process, this is where you'll be made aware of any behind the wall work that you weren't aware of um, that may need to be completed as an overall part of your project. It is also the time period that we'll um, schedule initial visits from tradespeople um, that may be required for your project. Example, you know, any um, HVAC technician could come out um, to be scheduled to your home to make any assessments. So again, we go into great lengths from the beginning to ensure we have an in-depth knowledge of your home and of your project before we can start uh, construction. Okay, <clears throat> so now for the fun part, because this is also in step three that the product selections are made and we usually make these in our showrooms here. Um, and they take about typically two to four meetings to complete. Um, but within our showroom, you have all of our cabinet lines that we do offer will be on display for you. We have different vignettes set up so you can see materials almost in kind of real life form. Um, you know, our, our countertops, we, um, we have a lot of different samples of those. We have a tile room that we make a lot of the selections um, out of there, um, but you know, not to worry, you know, if you didn't see anything there, we have a limited option, so we can always reach out to our reps and, you know, bring samples in, or we can meet you at different places too, like Ferguson or Dow Tile. So there's whatever works better for you through this process um, is what we can help with. So this is really the part of the time in two that's really entirely up to you. Um, it's based on how quickly you're able to make decisions and what your remodeling timeline looks like. So if you're very decisive and have a deadline for this project, you're likely to make the, um, selections pretty quickly. Um, if you don't have a timeline and you kind of get overwhelmed by the decision making process, you might want to slow this down a little bit to a more comfortable pace. But either way, we're here and happy to help. OK, so once we um, our selections that have been um, made and completed and your construction drawings have been finalized, um, we'll have a fixed price contract for you that will be completed. So based on the first project we looked at, the garage conversion, here is an example of a contract we have. Um, OK, so. The selections, the selections um, on this contract are selections specific to your project, your finishes, your quantities are outlined in detail in the construction contract. And then at the last page, um, here is what we have. Your total co um, cost of the project, which is over on the left-hand side, you can see the total amount. And then to move in construction um, or time of signing your contract, we do require a 20% down payment, which you can see just below that. And then below that line you'll have there have your design credits and so your total balance remaining will then be broken down to a payment schedule over on the right hand side it kind of gives you an example this payment schedule will be associated with major milestones throughout construction um, which later on um, during your pre-construction um, meeting will have um, a schedule they'll be giving you to make sure that these dates are clear so you know exactly what will be happening on your project from day to day and also um, when the payments will be due. Once the contract is signed and the deposit is collected, and then the project is now handed off to our production team. And then next we go into planning. So once we've signed the contract, that's when all the behind the scenes preparation takes place. You know, our job schedules are created, materials are ordered, labor and subcontractors are coordinated, and finalized construction plans are now submitted um, for necessary permitting. Um, speaking of permitting, though, due to COVID, our permitting systems um, in many counties have changed to an online system, and which is unfortunately has delayed the process a little bit. Um, another driver of the portion of the timeline is cabinetry order. So generally cabinets take about six to eight weeks to be delivered. However, due to COVID again, um, some of the orders take longer to fulfill. So we will not begin your project until the products are in. We really want to try to mitigate the, any delays as much as possible 
we take your commitment to your schedule very seriously. And as we know, that construction in your home is disruptive to your everyday life. So we want to minimize that disruption as much as possible. Okay, the logistics. So during the logistics phase, you'll be introduced to production manager Lee, as well as your Lee Carpenter. Um, your Lee Carpenter will be signed to your project. He is part of the team, um, the team at Foster and will work exclusively on your project from start to finish. So he's really your main point of contact through construction. He will be there Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. every day. And a lot of the work that will be done in your home is 80% is done in-house. Um, and then we do have 20% of what we use subcontractors, some contractors for. Um, but really that's for only special specialized portions of your project. However, we, we've we worked with them. Um, they've worked with us for a very long time. Some of them even work only exclusively with us, um, but we know what to expect for their quality of the work and we control their schedules to fit in your timeline of the project. So that keeps everything moving efficiently for you. So during our pre-construction meeting, you'll be introduced to your Lee Carpenter. Um, this meeting will be take place at your home. And during this meeting, you'll receive a copy of a detailed schedule. So the schedule is going to outline your daily start and stop times, um, as well as communication protocols. Um, and then you will have key client dates. Um, so when you're going on vacation, a holiday is coming up, or any other important date we just need to um, be aware of. We'll also go over our lockbox arrangements. Um, and then <clears throat> the schedule also lets you know who will be in your home and when. It will keep you up to date on what will happen on your project at any given day. As you can see, each week is highlighted what's going on there, um, but also be cognizant of when your scheduled payments will do. Um, so if you know that you'll have a payment due at the end of demolition, for example, you'll be able to consult the schedule and then plan accordingly. So during the pre-construction meeting, any and all client questions will, and concerns will be addressed. Um, you know, we strive to ensure that our time in your home will be as stress free for you and your family as possible. We really want to make sure that construction will be a pleasant experience for you. So now it's time for construction. So once construction starts, your lead carpenter, uh, carpenter will be the, like I said, the on site manager and um, any really for any project related activities. Um, Lee will be popping by to the production manager to make sure things going smoothly as well as your design consultant will be stopping by. But all of our employees are background checked and drug tested. We want to make sure you feel safe having our employees in your home um, and then through daily communication with foster crew works hard to keep disruptions to your life to a minimum. So <clears throat> what will construction be like? So maybe you've experienced a project in your home and you have an idea what to expect, but maybe this is your first remodeling project and you can only base your ideas of what construction like um, is like from um, HGTV reveals, which unfortunately isn't as accurate, but they gave you that 20 minutes of actual construction and then you arrive home and miraculously everything's done and beautiful. That's unfortunately not how it works. Um, there will be days that it'll be dusty. Um, there will be days that will be pretty, pretty loud. Um, there will be days will be both dusty and loud. So with this in mind, one way in which our crew works to avoid disruptions is by installing site protection, which we'll review some here. So here's an example of what we do is a, called a zipper walls and plastic sheeting, which are used to contain the dust and construction debris within the area being remodeled. Um, <clears throat> and then here, um, as you can see, we, we have filters that are temporarily, pla temporarily placed over the return ducts to prevent dust from traveling through ductwork or, or, or other areas in your home. And then this gives an example of some RAM boards. So we use these to cover the flooring um, and your stairs to prevent any accidental damage. And then when removing exterior walls, what we're going to do is tarp um, over that area or um, use if you're removing a roof, we'll use tarp as well. Um, this helps protect the interior space from being exposed to any of the weather elements. And now before construction, um, we do require the space to be empty prior to demo day. And then I highly encourage you to consider the path um, the carpenter and the tradespeople will take to get to the workspace every day. Um, you want to move and cover any furniture that may be in the high traffic zone, remove pictures and artwork from the walls, 
even um, from the back of the walls too, just because if they're nailing or anything like that, we don't want anything to fall down or, and break. Um, if they're be using stairs, um, we do protect the treads like we showed with the ram boards, um, but you wanna make sure to remove the artwork and any decor off the walls as well, of the stairway. So at the end of the day of, um, of your project, your um, project will be left what we call broom clean. And this kind of gives an example of this, um, but all of the um, tools and other work materials, materials will be stowed and the floor will be swept free of any debris and trash. Um, and then any um, will be bagged and removed um, from the site into a dumpster as well each day. And just in light of the circumstances, we would be remiss if we didn't address the steps we've taken to mitigate the spread of COVID. So here you can see we've, um, we will have um, on-site hand washing stations. Our employees wash their hands regularly. They wipe down their phones at least twice per day and wear masks. Um, regular deep cleanings of job sites, trucks, tools, and other in our showroom with hospital grade disinfectants are happening multiple times per day. Um, of course, here we have the job sites are enclosed using the plastic zipper walls and the blue tape to isolate each work area from utilized living space. And then here kind of gives a, um, we are using integrated filtration. Um, so here is a up close view of the HEPA air scrubbers um, that we use in confined areas and as well as negative air fans in large spaces to vent out air from your home. So we'll run hospital grade disinfectant through our fans at the end of each day as well. And then of course, we're following the CDC guidelines. We're practicing social distancing with each other and our clients. And then we ask our employees to stay home if they have any symptoms. Okay, step eight. So once we're done, um, two to three weeks after your project is completed on time and on budget, with the punch list, items have been addressed and signed off on you, and a final payment has been received. Your design consultant and Dave Foster, the company president, will do a final walkthrough of your space. So during this meeting, um, we will also present you with a warranty binder. Um, <clears throat> so this binder will detail all of the products used during your renovation, along with the warranty information from both Foster Remodeling as well as each manufacturer. And then if needed, a final punch list will be created by David. Um, the items on this list will be corrected until every time, I'm sorry, so every item is complete and the space is perfected. So next we're gonna take another break um, to pause for any more questions. And then um, then after that, we'll look at some different types of additions. But um, please, you know, feel free to put any questions into the chat at any time. Okay, okay Carol, we do have several questions. You know, one question is, uh, I would like to add a deck to my house, but I have an HOA. So uh, do we work with HOAs to help get things passed? Yes, yes, um, that's a great question. And we work um, with HOAs all the time. We, we know kind of what they're looking for and we will put together construction drawings um, that you can send to your HOA for approval. Okay, another question we have is, uh, you know, will this seminar be available when complete? And I can go ahead and uh, take this one. So what will happen probably a week after the seminar is completed uh, we have to make some edits so that it's in a format that we can share and what we will do then is post it you know onto our website and also we will email everybody who's attending a link to the seminar so uh here's another question uh am i able to stay in the home you know during the remodeling of the kitchen that's a great question uh, yeah as um you're you're able to stay in the home um <clears throat> during the remodeling depending on um what you're kind of if it's as long as we're not taking the roof off your kitchen or expanding it in, in, in any way um you'd be able to stay in the home during the kitchen remodel um, we would use those zipper ties like we talked about to separate the space um, and what we also like to do is kind of if, if possible with your um old appliance kind of make a makeshift kitchen for you too as well Okay, we have another question, you know, also during the project, uh, can work be added, you know, while under construction? Great question. Yeah, we can definitely um, add work while we're under construction. What we'll do is a change order. Um, so we put that together, give you a, a price for that, 
and then we can always add um, work to to that. Um, it would just increase your timeline a little bit depending on what the work you're looking to do. OK, one more additional question and you may have uh, answered or some of it. You know, we want to add a second story to our home. Do we have to move out during construction or we could live or could we live in our basement? That is a good question. Um, I believe if you're living, um, if you're adding a second story, we would have to remove the roof. Um, so most cases you would have to move out. However, um, I if you're living in the basement, I think you would still be able to. Chris, maybe you would be a little bit better to answer that portion. Sure, uh, we would look at every job, you know, kind of as its own unique project. And, uh, you know, there have been instances where clients have been able to live in the house when we uh, added the second story. But if it's, uh, you know, a lot of uh, renovation that may impact, you know, the main level, we may ask you to move out for a brief period of time. So that's it for the questions now, and uh, we'll go ahead and proceed with the presentation and we'll be taking several more breaks throughout the seminar. All right, perfect. Well, thank you everyone for your questions and we'll continue on to additions. All right, so now that we've gone through the foster process, let's talk about additions. Your life is constantly evolving. So, you know, whether you have your in-laws moving in, maybe your adult children are now returning to the nest. Um, you're working from home now. Maybe you're expanding your family, or maybe you just need some more outside um, space to entertain. So you must ask yourself, you know, is this current footprint of your home conducive to your new normal? You know, a thoughtfully designed home addition from a qualified contractor gives you that functional square footage for daily living as well as entertaining family and friends. You now here at Foster's, we specialize in both aesthetically and structurally seamless transitions to add beauty and function to your home. From in-law suites to second floor additions, your designer will take your ideas, provide solutions, and guide you through the process to make your home you love work for you and your family. Okay, so now that we've decided we need additional space, the next step is determine if what we can um, can do can actually be done. So therefore, you know, we talked about before, we're gonna need a copy of your plat prior to our initial visit. So with this, this is how we navigate the complex city ordinances for you. We research zoning laws, requirements, and covenants. Um, we're also going to, you know, whether if you're in historic Alexandria with a certain aesthetic requirement of uh, requirements or neighborhoods, neighborhoods with strict HOAs. Your designer is experienced at working within established parameters and still delivering a home addition that will allow you to fall in love with your home again. So another few things to consider when you're looking to add an addition. Once in design, um, before we go out to your um, go out for a measure, we'll need to have Miss Utility come out and mark the utilities. This will help us identify anything else that um, we couldn't see from our initial visit that may need to be relocated or we might need to change our design concept. Now, like we talked about before, if we're Moving the roof over your existing house, you will need to move out of your home during that time period. Um, so you'll need to make arrangements prior to time of construction. When adding um, on an addition, we'll need to heat and cool the new space, which could mean upgrading your HVAC or using ducted or ductless mini splits. And then depending on the electrical panel, if it's older or if it doesn't have enough space to support your new addition, you might need to upgrade your panel or um, add a sub panel as well. Um, another thing to consider if you're on well and septic um, and you're looking to add a bedroom to your, with your addition, we'll need to check um, with the health department to confirm what it's rated for. We'll also need to see where your septic field is located since there are restrictions on how close you can build to that. Okay, so now having explained the logistics of additions, let's look at a few different type of additions. So here, we have a sunroom addition with a covered porch and deck that was done in Springfield. So adding a sunroom is a perfect way to extend your livable, livable square footage. It's a great place for entertaining or even just relaxing with a good book that you can enjoy all year long. And then adding a deck onto a sunroom is really just the cherry on top. Now there's nothing like being cooped up for a year to now have a place to go outside and relax and just really enjoy the fresh air. So here um, are some of their existing photos. So as well as their 
existing floor plan below um, showing their existing patio, which will be um, staying with this particular project and then their existing floor plan. So with this project, they would like to use the existing deck space for the new sunroom and then add a covered porch on the end that will open up to a deck that will wrap around um, to the sunroom side. Since we're now um, adding a roof and extending a little past the current front, uh, footprint of the deck, we'll need to verify the rear setbacks with the county. We'll also need to check the side setbacks as well since we want to add the deck to the side of the new sunroom. So just to know, um, you know, in most cases, a deck can encroach the setbacks usually within five feet or so, give or take, depending on your zoning. Um, but once we do add a roof to the structure, it will now have to stay within the setback guidelines. So once we have your plat, your designer will research this information prior to our, our initial visit. So now that we'll be adding a roof to the new structure, we'll need to tie it in around the main level bay window and then um, choose a type of pitch. We need to be careful of that because as you can see in the photo <clears throat> on the left hand side, there's two windows above. We want to make sure that new um, the new roof doesn't interfere with those windows. So also um, when we're looking at this, we'll need to demo the existing deck completely, including the post and footings since the deck footings won't support the new structure. We'll also need to remove the existing bay roof, um, adding a new one that will match and tie into the new sunroom. And then here they do have a gas line in for the fireplace and the exhaust fan that will need to be relocated. Um, and they're thinking um, they wanted to put a future grill on the deck, um, so we'll need to add additional gas line for that as well. Next, what we'll do is put together a proposed floor plan uh, based on everything we discussed um, during this visit. And then here is their proposed floor plan, as well as some renderings um, as well. So as requested, we used the footprint of the deck um, for the new sunroom, and then we extended the cover porch about six feet into the yard, as well as adding about eight and a half by 13 deck off the side um, with a set of stairs that will be going down to their existing patio. So they requested to use composite materials so that the covered porch and deck will be maintenance free. As outlined in the proposal, um, pressure treated framing will be wrapped with a Versatex PVC and the deck and railing will be made from composite. Since they want the sunroom to feel bright and airy, we've added windows along the exterior walls, a French double door leading into the covered porch and skylights above. We've also added recessed lights on, the, on a dimmer and a ceiling fan both in the sunroom and the covered porch to help with the air circulation. So <clears throat> with this, lastly, we need to consider how we're going to heat and cool the new space. Now, so for this particular project, we recommended using a Mitsubishi wall mount um, indoor ductless mini split with an outdoor mini split uh, heat pump. So with these units, we usually try to put them um, a little bit higher kind of towards the ceiling. So it's more of an inconspicuous in, in, uh, location. Um, but all of these requests would be factored in the preliminary budget to give us an accurate budget range before you decide to move forward in design with us. You know, again, we want to make sure that we're transparent and upfront as possible with the budget that is really re required to complete your project. And then here we just have, um, you can see before and after um, of their floor plan, so you can see how we kind of change things up a little bit there. And then we'll take a look at some of their after photos. So <clears throat> here's some of the after photos of their sunroom. Um, so you can see the exterior wall. We have two Pella double fixed doors as well as a double in swing French door with a fixed um, frame half circle window above. On each side of the wall, we have two sets of Pella double hung windows and four skylights. The flooring is a um, it's a solid pre finished five inch bellow wood, um, a select golden teak hardware flooring. And then here, the next photo, you can see the red circle. This is where um, we would place the wall hung mini split right above that window on the left hand side. So it's really not in a noticeable area. It's kind of hidden behind the fireplace, um, but that's something you do want to, um, you know, consider <clears throat> when we have these additions. We'll have to either we can do a wall mounted one. There are floor mounted um, options as well, or even in the ceiling, but that's something we can work through together to make sure it's not as noticeable. And then 
we have on the covered porch and the open deck. Here are some um, after photos of those. So with this, we use truck, um, we use Trex deck in railing, um, as well as um, Trex LED round deck rail light, and we used a flat deck rail light that was selected for the top of the post. So that way it gives a nice um, lighting throughout in the, in the dark. And of course, on the stairs coming down, um, we use the LED riser lights. And then for the porch ceiling, uh, we used a PVC beaded material. And then here we have their before photos and their after photos. So you can kind of see the compa uh, comparison between the two of those. And then we'll go ahead and take a quick break for questions. All right, Kara, we have a few more questions for you. So uh, one of them is uh, once a contract is signed, how are payments handled? Yeah, so once a contract is signed on your contract, you will see um, we'll have a payment schedule that um, and with that payment schedule will be tied to every um, major milestone after that. Um, but when you're in construction, you will have a schedule that be printed out. So you can see each week um, when the time will come for the payment will be due and then you just hand a check over to your construction, um, your lead carpenter and he'll be able to take that for you. Okay, another question is uh, we would like to uh, add a bedroom to a basement. What is involved with doing that? Um, <clears throat> so to add a bedroom to a basement, um, there's, it's a little tricky. Um, you want to make sure we need to have egress access uh, within a basement within a bedroom. So you need to have a window. Um, so with the window, it has to be um, a certain requirement for that. Um, so window itself can only be about 5.7 square feet. Um, so you're really looking at a minimum of the opening 20 inches wide and 24 inches high. Um, so in order to do that, um, you, depending if you're below grade or above, um, we just either have to, um, we'd have to work that in um, and either do like a window well and have it come down a little bit below. And then the window can't be um, lower than 44 inches um, above the ground. So we can definitely add a bedroom to there. It just um, requires a little bit more information. Okay, and one last question uh, is COVID uh, or how is COVID impacting uh, prices on materials? Um, unfortunately, yep, COVID has, we definitely seen an increase in cost of materials um, since COVID um, began, um, especially with our framing material um, as well, has gone up significantly, um, but we're really seeing a lot of delays um, because of COVID. Yeah, so right now lumber has been impacted uh, probably the most. Uh, right now the, the price of PVC or plastics is really uh, going up as well. We just received a 14% increase on PVC. And uh, also uh, lead times are really stretching out. So, uh, you know, cabinet lead times can be 12 to 14 weeks now. And also appliances, they can take 14 or 16 weeks. So those are uh, some of the challenges that uh, have been created by COVID. And uh, right now, that's all the questions for now. OK, great. Thank you everyone for your questions. And we will take in a couple more breaks too. Um, so feel free to enter your questions into the chat and then we'll review them um, during our next break. All right, so we'll go on to <clears throat> Here we have a Master Suite edition in Lauren. Um, so with this edition, um, we have they really wanted an aging and in place concept uh, design. So with aging in place design, it really integrates safety into every aspect of your design. You know, we're planning for accessible bathrooms, we're updating lighting options, um, wider doors and hallways to accommodate wheelchairs and really eliminating steps as much as possible. So here we have their existing floor plan, as well as their um, some existing photos. And then where the red circle is, <clears throat> this is where they wanted to add their master suite addition, um, really connecting the family room with the garage. So prior to our visit, we verified the rear and side setbacks and 
they are on a, a well and septic, so we called the health department and see what the septic was rated for. Um, especially since they're um, looking to add a bedroom. So with an added bathroom, we need um, we need to consider how we're going to get the water service and the waste transfer to the existing septic tank. So for this particular project, the um, we did we constructed a basement underneath the house, which will house the water heater and the ejector pump. And then in order to cool and heat the new addition, we needed to install a ducted mini split. So <clears throat> as you can see from the photos, we needed to relocate the propane tank um, as well as um, remove a couple trees. Um, and then of course the deck and the stairs um, over on the side that will be affected as well. So the homeowners here um, contacted directly with the tree service to remove their trees as well as their propane provider to relocate the propane tank to a different area. Um, and then here we have a pro proposed foundation plan. So with this, um, we constructed um, this new addition on a pier footings. Um, the homeowner really wanted to be able to store things underneath the addition. And then as you can see um, in the little bit darker area over here, this is where we constructed um, the basement, <clears throat> which will house the new utility room. And then here is our proposed first floor plan. So for this, we wanted a master bedroom, walk-in closet, and a master bathroom. You know, since they're looking for aging in place design concept, all the doors are 36 inches wide. We're using pocket doors in the interior to really maximize that clearance area. Um, and then I'll show you a couple of the renderings um, as well. And then you can see in that top rendering, so that's where the addition's coming out, and we're going to tie that into um, part of their existing deck, um, so it just kind of ends there for them. <clears throat> and then in the bathroom, um, here's a rendering of that, and then here we have grab bars in the shower and the toilet space. Um, so there's no threshold in the shower, which eliminates the concern of stepping over a curb. Um, we've also constructed a bench seat with a handheld shower system um, close to the bench for accessibility. We've installed a linear drain, which we're sloping away from that shower door. Um, so this way it minimizes the uh, water in the bathroom, but the, the bathroom itself will have a waterproof membrane installed under the tile. Under the tile. Um, so you don't have to worry if, if water does go out there a little bit. And then here's just for comparison, your um, before your existing floor plan and then um, the revised floor plan here. So you can kind of see the difference. And then here's some after photos. So, <clears throat> so as you can see, we've matched the Premier Log um, three inch by eight inch siding. We've installed Anderson gliding windows that meet the county's egress window code for a bedroom. Um, and then we have some after photos of their bedroom. Um, so right now they actually want to use this as a living room until they need to use it as a bedroom. Um, but we added the recessed lighting in the ceil in a ceiling fan. We did uh, motion sensor lighting in the walk-in closet, which is really nice and convenient. So that way um, as they walk in, it just pops on for them. So you don't have to worry about switches. And then here's after photos of their bathroom. So we used the Pietra Art Pebbles from Florida Tile on the shower floor, as well as the accent band around the shower and the backsplash above the vanity, as, as shown there. Um, the ceramic wall and floor tile are both from Dow Tile, and um, the cabinets we used from Crystal uh, for their vanity. And then the countertop is Cambria Shirebrook, um, which we used for the vanity countertop, as well as the um, top of the shower bench. And then this is just some before and after um, photos again for comparison here. And then we'll pause again for any questions. All right, so we do have a question. Do you need the county's approval to add a sunroom at the place of an existing deck? Um, that is a <clears throat> great question, yes. And um, so even though you do have an existing deck there, the deck has um, their requirements. Um, they have a little bit different requirements than a sunroom. Um, so with a sunroom, once we add a roof to the structure, 
then um, the that has to stay within the guidelines of your zoning setbacks. With the deck, um, their rules um, are you can kind of encroach it a little bit. It really depends on your zoning area, um, which we would verify before we go out to your home. But there, there is a little bit of difference between the two, and we would have to check on that. Yeah, in addition to uh, depending on the age of the deck, it may not be built to current code. So uh, more often than not, we would have to replace the existing deck and rebuild a whole new structure to uh, reach the meet the current uh, county building codes. And uh, that's it for questions uh, this time around. OK, great. Thank you for your questions and we will continue to pause a couple more times. Um, so, you know, feel free to enter your questions in the chat at any time. All right, so next we'll look at an addition here. Um, we have an in-law suite addition in Fairfax Station um, where we use part of the existing house as well as adding on additional space. So, you know, intelligently designed in-law suites create an independent spaces for families who live together. You know, these days we are seeing um, more and more multi-generational filled homes and the number continues to rise. So in-law suites have, are really becoming a popular project in, in, in remodeling. They create a separate space for grandparents, um, you know, who can truly give you the best world, as, um, best of both worlds. You know, sons and daughters can keep an eye on their parents while grandparents are helping to look after their grandkids. You know, really helps solidifying those relationships as well as keeping everyone safe. So transforming your existing home to accommodate a bedroom, bathroom, and a kitchenette really requires an experienced designer who can kind of navigate the tricky nuances of family dynamics, you know, space and, and style. So not everyone is gonna agree on the finishes or even the layout, but you know, not to worry, your design consultant will be there to help you guide everyone through that process um, together. Okay, so here um, are their existing floor plans. Um, so here just kind of gives the uh, existing foundation plan as well as their existing first level plan here. And since um, they wanted an addition that would include a master suite and a kitchenette, um, dining area and a family room with a privacy door to the access of the main house. Since this addition will come off the left side of the main house, extending a little further into the back of the yard, uh, the county verification was needed for the side and rear setbacks. So in order to construct their new addition, we needed to um, relocate their existing exterior compressor units on that left hand side of the house, as well as the electric service meter, um, which is on the rear of the deck. Um, and of course, removing the deck entirely. Okay, so here we have the proposed foundation plan. So um, the, as you can see here, kind of in the, the hash mark areas is where <clears throat> we have the new crawl space that will support the new structure. Um, we also needed to create an opening from the existing crawl space um, to have access to the new crawl space. Um, and, and then, which you kind of see right there. And then um, in order to get the water and um, to remove waste from the new kitchenette and bathroom, we installed a hanger sewer line, which is around the perimeter of the room. And then we tied that into their new existing um, sewer, pit, sewer pit. Um, and then here is their proposed first floor plan. So then everything in red is the new addition construction. Um, so like the last project we reviewed, they wanted to age in place design concept. So again, we use 36 inch doors um, and, and pocket doors where necessary to kind of maximize that clearance space. Um, the bathroom, we used the curbless shower without a shower door to have easy access to the space. We also installed a shower bench with a handheld shower and grab bars um, throughout the bathroom. And then here we have just a couple of renderings showing of the, the new addition. And then of course, in order to support the new addition, we needed to upgrade their water heater, um, their electrical panel, and then we actually added a secondary HVAC system, which is specifically dedicated to the new space. And then here we have the um, two floor plans. So you can kind of see the first one and then the afterwards. Um, so here, they still, like I said, we used part of the um, part of the existing space where they had the library and playroom. So that area is now their sitting room, and then we kind of built off of that. 
And so here we have some after photos. So here you can see we matched all the exterior finishes on the existing house. Um, and then with the kitchenette, we constructed a faux um, brick veneer accent wall to separate the space. And then we carried the existing trim work detail into the new addition, matching the traditional style of the main house. Um, in the kitchen, um, <clears throat> we used crystal cabinets again. Um, we actually stacked those to the ceiling um, and then to create more of a, cabage, um, a cabinet storage as well as framing out the box window. And then we used a Brazilian white granite with an OG edge for the kitchen countertop as well as the island. And then for the flooring, um, here we have, it's just an oak wood flooring throughout. And then here is an after photo of their bedroom. And then as well as their bathroom. So in the bathroom, we used an arabescado brushed marble tile on the walls and shower bench. And then for the floor, we used an arabescado black dot polished marble basket weave. Um, and the vanity, we also use crystal cabinets again. Um, and then this has a china black marble vanity top. And lastly, we'll go ahead and look at their um, after photo of the back of the house. So here they wanted to separate access to the outdoor patio. So we installed a thermotrue French door um, and the patio itself is a flagstone. And then we have our before and after. And then we'll break um, for more questions. OK, so we have several more questions. You know, one question is uh, we have a Cape Cod, uh, Cape Cod style house and uh, the ceilings are kind of angled and the bedrooms are small. What can be done to uh, you know, give a normal sized roof to that? Hmm. That is a great question, Chris. Um, I think you might be better to answer that question. Yeah, so with uh, some Cape Cod houses, you know, basically you have a steep pitched roof and you may have uh, a couple of gable dormers in the front. You know, sometimes we can uh, increase the size or add a shed dormer on the back, which could help. In other instances, we've actually taken the uh, entire roof structure off and added a second story. So there's uh, several things we can do to uh, improve the size of the bedrooms in the Cape Cod. So uh, another question we have are, are there rules, uh, you know, regarding uh, adding a kitchen to an in-law suite? That is a great question, and yes, um, they are. Um, there are rules, and it really depends on the county you're in. Each county has kind of different um, regulations regarding adding secondary kitchens. Um, so we would check with the county and see which one um, you kind of fall into, um, and then it, it really depends on even with some counties, you know, size of the sink or what we can have there. Some of them won't even last have. Um, any hot utensils, like hot appliances. So um, there is a lot of restrictions. I think, um, you know, especially with Fairfax County is kind of letting, letting up a little bit on the restrictions with that, um, but we'd have to check with the county that you're in. And a lot of times what the county is trying to prevent is uh, having you turn the property into rental property. So uh, if it is specifically for use for in-laws, then uh, there are you know, certain exemptions and uh, thing processes you can follow to uh, go ahead and have that installed. And that's it for questions for for now. OK, great. Well, thank you for your questions. Um, we will pause another time um, throughout the seminar. So if you have any more questions, please feel free to enter enter them in the chat and we'll review them shortly. OK, so our next um, project, which will be our last project we'll review, um, is addition we have in Alexandria. So here they wanted to add a home office with a finished basement below. So, you know, more and more people are working from home and you may find yourself, you know, needing that extra space uh, that's a little bit separate from the um, all the commotion of, of the house to really focus on, you know, your work, taking calls or attending those lovely Zoom meetings. Um, so if you don't have currently a room that you can convert into an office, you know, an addition is a, is a great way to give you that space that you need, which will still allow um, flexibility to continue to work remotely. OK, so here we have their existing photos. And as you can see, um, the basement is unfinished. Um, the client wanted to 
add uh, additional space to the left hand side of the house for an office area, as well as extending their basement below to help support the new structure. Um, since we're adding to the side of the house again, we'll need to verify those setbacks with the county. And then looking at this side photo, um, you can kind of see we have an electric and gas meter that will need to be relocated as well as an existing hose bib. We also have two windows on the first level that will be need to be removed as well as one of the windows that is in the bedroom above. Um, so just to note, I know we talked about this briefly earlier, but with removing a bedroom windows, we need to stay within code. There must be a window uh, within the bedroom that has the minimum opening of that 5.7 square feet. So like I said, it's a minimum of 20 inches wide by 24 inches high, and that's the opening itself. And of course, the windowsill must be 44 inches or less above the finished floor. And then here we have their proposed floor plan as well as some um, renderings of their office. So where we remove the two windows we talked about on that first level, we'll install a pair of pocket doors um, that will separate and um, sorry, and then we're also going to um, separate the exterior entrance door uh, to the new addition. So um, in here we looked at adding recessed lighting throughout and then as well as a ceiling fan um, to install. And then here we have some after photos. So here we constructed a hip roof over hip roof, sorry, over the new addition and used exterior finishes, um, which were similar to the main house. Um, we relocated the electric and gas meter toward the back of the house. And then in order to heat and cool the new addition, they used a ductless mini split. And then I'll show, here are some um, renderings of the interior of the home. So here you can see um, we used, um, we installed Anderson casement windows as well as the two 15 light French uh, interior pocket doors um, on each side. And then for the cabinetry, um, we used crystal cabinets again. Um, this is a cherry wood with a honey tone stain. And then the countertop is a Wilson Art laminate countertop and then with a Brazilian topaz color. And then, of course, the flooring is um, they chose carpeting flooring for this. And then right behind the fan, you can see kind of where that mini split is um, hidden kind of in the gable. Um, but like I said, we do have a lot of different options and we can work with you on which option works best um, to kind of um, hide it a little bit more for you. And then here you can see the um, the um, before and after photos and where we added on. <clears throat> and then we'll pause, um, take our last break for questions. So there are no new questions. OK, perfect. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, um, for your great questions today. You know, if we if you think of anything else, um, you can always send them your answers, um, send them to us individually and um, we can go over those. But thank you again for taking time out of your weekend to join us. You know, I hope you enjoyed the sem seminar and we look forward to hopefully seeing you soon in your home or in our showroom. But I will leave you with a short video that really illustrates our process and really what it's like to work with Foster, you know, straight from our clients. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend and thanks again.